My name is Ian and welcome to Planted. In this video we're going to talk about harvesting seed from your own plants so that you can practice growing plants from seed. Should they fail it's not the end of the world but I feel that many of them will grow and they're a wonderful source for you to give to friends and family and to trade for new plants. Now of course you can go outside and you can buy seed, they're readily available, but you can only buy what's available. And it may be that you've got something quite choice in your own garden that should you be able to get it to grow from seed, you can use it to trade with your friends and family. So uh, there's a one very important aspect of this seed collecting process, and that is called seed viability. Not all seed pods have got seeds inside that will grow. And it's through trial and error that you'll find out that some plants are much easier to grow from seed and others can be very difficult. They might need uh, what's called scarification where the outer shell is worn down or they might need stratification which is a process of heating and cooling. Typically winter is a really good example of um, uh, stratification. When you start to learn a new skill in the garden it's, it's very tempting to identify what it is that you want to do and then rush to the very end where you have success. And we tend to skip over this learning part. So this video is all about learning to harvest seed and then you can use those seed to practice your germination skills. And it will cost you next to nothing. Should you have success, a very gratifying, very rewarding, and you'll have great confidence to grow even more plants from seed uh, in later years. So let me show you a few plants I think are uh, very interesting that I have in my garden. Now this plant is really interesting. It's called the South African Foxglove and that common name is a little bit misleading. It comes from South Africa and it has a flower that looks very much like a foxglove. So you can see here it puts out hundreds of flowers. Here's the, the flower that we like and as you come down the stem you start to get seed pots. These are green, these are not yet ripe, but the earlier flowers are at the very bottom of the stem. And if you, if you pick these and you turn them upside down, that's only got a few ripe seeds, so that's not fully ripe. They should all fall out very easily. Oh, we've got some more seeds. You can see them falling out. But what happens is the top opens and then as the branch shakes in the breeze, the dry seed are thrown out and because they're three or four feet, maybe a meter above soil level, the wind blows that seed a few feet away. This is the plant's way to aid uh, seed dispersal. So this plant is just laden with flowers and laden with more seed, but you have to make sure that they're dry. So if I get down here, I can talk to you about the extreme end of growing plants from seed. This is a beautiful lily that I bought and I've grown these from seed a couple of years ago. And I mean, you can buy it in stores, but they're very difficult to come by. So that was a packet of seed that I bought and I've got this beautiful flower. In here, we've got the Christia. This is the butterfly. And you can see we've got lots of um, seed pods. And if I just run through my hands, I can see the tiny seeds but I grew this from seed. Uh, the Christia is just a, a beautiful foliage plant that has got little leaves like butterflies that shake in the wind. So didn't find it for sale as a plant, grew it from seed. And what we have here is a bit of an oddity. Uh, I recognize this is germinating and it not being a weed, that is let's leave it and let it grow. And it's just now putting out these very attractive feathery pink flowers. So that came in with a plant that was given to me. Seed had fallen into the plant that I wanted and this has grown and I potted it here um, for it to grow this summer. So we've got um, lilies, we've got the Christia and down here we've got the Portulaca. This also came from seed that I grew last year and I left it in the garden. So this little arrangement really cost just a few dollars because it was grown from seed. And I think the only detriment to growing seed is that it's a little bit of a, a longer commitment that you have to put into growing plants. 
incredibly rewarding, well worth doing, and if you've tried it in the past and it didn't work, don't let that put you off. Please, please try again. This next plant is the Everlasting Sweet Pea. I've had this for about four or five years now. Every year it dies down to a, a stable root that does not die, it goes through the winter. And then every May I get this prolific growth and it puts out these most beautiful white flowers. It's very much a, a June, maybe July flower, but this is what you get, crisp white flowers um, just covered. But if you look closely, you can see here that these are the brown seed pods and they've split, which means that the sunlight has ripened them, they've dried out, and the seed has been cast on the ground. So if you were to look closely down here, you would see lots and lots of seed. But the way to harvest these seed is to, if you see here, we've got a little cluster. Now they're not rattling, which means that they're not quite ripe. And you can tell because you've got a green stem and then you've got these leaves, uh, these seed pods. Oh, that one's rattling just a little bit. So you could harvest that, stick it in a bag, and then grow that next spring. That could work. But what you really want is... Oh, that's much better. Don't know if you can hear this. That's rattling inside. And if we open this up... Yeah, there's a seed. And, and all you need... I mean, there's four seed. You might want to save 20 or 30 and uh, sow them all and see if you get a few to germinate. So this is the everlasting sweet pea. It's called Latherus latifolius alba. I know it's a bit of a mouthful. So this is the spectacular Nicotiana langsdorfi. I bought the seed and you can see there the shape of the flower. Very petite, very elegant. And then here we've got the seed pods behind. But if I just reach in here, See these tiny little dots? I mean, you can hardly see them, but those are seed. And this is the issue with seed. Some are tiny, some are substantial. You have to somehow figure it out. Um, but you don't need to capture many of these for it to work in your garden. So that's the introduction to collecting seeds. You've got all sorts of plants that you can practice on in your garden. Now's the time to go out there. And for the next, uh, certainly September and going into October, you can collect seeds and have some degree of success. Now this is a very beautiful plant. This is an Aristolochia. I'm going to just pick this so that you can see it closely. I've mentioned this before. This is a, a tropical vine that I grow and it has the most remarkable fragrance. Um, and because this is tropical, I'm not getting any seeds set on this. If it was grown in a warmer climate, it might be able to advance so that it did put out seed. So not all the plants that you've got will have seed but you'd be surprised how many are out there that will have seed that you can grow from. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.